guy means business. Young Frankenstein! Oh dear, nothing left. What shall we throw in now? Welcome along to Film Talk, and I'm delighted to say we're adding another title to our list of the 100 greatest films ever made, at least 100 greatest films in our humble opinion. I'm joined by the wonderful Phil Campbell, who is one half of the Hammer Runners. And Phil, what is your contribution to our list today? Today, today, Richard, uh, a Mel Brooks film. We had to have one in our 100s. Absolutely. And my favourite is Young Frankenstein. It was written by both Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder together, so it's very much their project which Real comes, partnership. yeah, which comes over because you see Gene Wilder put so much into it, and he's he's just so good at, at what he does. I mean, he just makes you laugh all the time. Mm. They had so much fun making the film, apparently, that um, Mel Brooks wrote some extra extra scenes to film, which they're never going to use in the film, just to keep everybody there, just to keep them <laughs> keep, keep going, <laughs> probably for experimental reasons. But um, anyway, the the plot is obviously based yep. on the Universal's 1931 Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. He sort of mixes the two together because you have the scene with the blind man played by Gene Hackman, mm. which is really from Bride of Frankenstein. But he's kept all the traditional and classic appearance of the early Frankenstein movie with the sets, which were based upon the same sets that James Whale used in Frankenstein. And even the um, laboratory equipment. He found a guy who actually made the laboratory equipment for the 1931 Frankenstein movie was still alive and actually had some of the stuff in his garage. No. So, yeah, so he said, could I borrow it, please? And he, he got hold of it and um, used it in the film and then gave him a credit. Wow. For it, which I thought was really good. Very good. Um, so stuff like that. It's, it's attention to detail. If you know the original film and Friday Frankenstein, then you sort of maybe laugh a bit more with the way it's sent up. But it still has its own gags in it. And you have Gene Wilder playing... Frederick Fran or Frederick Frankenstein, Frankenstein. He doesn't want people to know that he's really Frankenstein, the great descendant of Victor mm -hmm. Frankenstein, the man who did it all in the first place. So he keeps saying, "No, it's not. It's Frankenstein." He says, "It's not Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein." Okay, and his name's Frederick or Frederick. He, he um, inherits the castle mm -hmm. um, because his uh, grandfather, great grandfather, dies, and he inherits the castle. So he goes there, but he's still trying to avoid anything to do with the the history of Frankenstein and the monster and everything else. But um, with the castle comes uh, a resident assistant, that's Igor, or Igor, played by Igor, played by Marty Feldman. Yep. As he says, oh, it's Igor, Frudrick. He says, if you're going to have names like that, you know, he's going to swap it around. And a young <laughs> assistant, played by Terry Garr, called Inga, who is a German lady, who he first meets when they, they get on a, the coach. Igor, I want to call him Igor, Igor takes him to the castle and uh, she's rolling him around and she's I like to roll in the hay roll 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 in the hay would you like to have a roll in the hay roll 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 in the hay but back in the castle he finds the book he finds the book which actually says by Victor Frankenstein it says how I did it and he starts reading all about it and goes actually this is possible this we can do it I think we can do it and so he gets seduced by the whole idea, if you see what I mean. The mm. castle, the people, Igor, and um, ends up wanting to make his own monster. Well, not really a monster. He wants to do this creation of a new life. So he manages to get hold of a body, and then he gives uh, Igor the task to go and get a brain for his new dead body he's got, but he wants to reanimate. Mm -hmm. And he tells him to go and get the, bo the brain of this uh, Dr. Hans Delbrook. But Eagle goes along and has a bit of an accident. But he comes back with a brain. And when they put the brain in, of course, the monster goes completely bonkers. He brings mm. it back to life. He does all the traditional lightning and going up to the bolt of lightning, hitting the, the monster and the electric electrification and everything else like that and lights. And it sort of comes to life like this and goes bonkers. And they have to sort of sedate it. <laughs> That's another gag which goes off river, but it's very funny. Anyway, and eventually he says to, to, to Eagle, he says, so... What brain did you get? Did you is that the brain of Doctor Hans um, Delbrook? And he says, not exactly. He says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I had a problem, so I got another brain. He goes, I see, right. And what was this other brain? What was this from? He says, well, somebody called Abby. He goes, right, okay. Abby, what? He says, well, Abby, normal. It had on it. <laughs> he says, right, <laughs> we put in a brain of an Abby, a normal person. And he goes on like that. Mm. They eventually 
God, I thought so many crazy things happen. Um, there's also the other character, of course, to remember is uh, Madeleine Kahn playing Elizabeth. Yeah, That's, yes. Um, Frederick Frankenstein's um, fiance, and um, Cloris Leachman, who plays uh, Frau Blucher. Hey! Every time her name's mentioned, <laughs> the horses neigh in the back. No matter where she is in the castle. Yes! And it was you who left my grandfather's book out for me to find. Yes! So that I would. Yes! Then you and Victor were. Say it. He was my boyfriend! <laughs> And the monster played by Peter Boyle. He's very funny. I mean, he plays it very straight, traditional mm. monster makeup. Um, apparently, they put, they painted his face um, a, sort of a bluey green because that works better for black and white, which they did for Boris Karloff. It had to be made in black and white. It had to follow the same path mm. as the original and look, have the same appearance to it, you know, which is what they did. I think it was the funniest Mel Brooks film uh, of it, all. It does. Mel's writing and his direction and his the yeah. whole production just oozes the best of Mel Brooks. I think it? so, and it works better because apparently Gene Wilder said to him he didn't want him to be in it, didn't, don't want Mel Brooks to be in it. He said, you know, write it with me, direct it, because so often he likes to play a character, you know, and sort of gets a lot of enjoyment from that, and they just thought they would sort of detract from it too much. They were trying to keep it, <laughs> it's mm. a crazy film, but as sensible as possible. I keep it in the confines of a story. Yes, I think we could all use a good laugh. Don't miss Young Frankenstein, personally directed by Mel Blazing Saddles Brooks in black and white. No offence. It's the best. It's the complete package of Mel Brooks, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And as such, a worthy addition to our list of the 100 greatest films of all time. Oh, yes, I think so. 10 out of 10. Fantastic. <laughs> there we are. That's it. Young Frankenstein from 1974, Mel Brooks production. One of the greatest films of all time, in our humble opinion. If you agree, leave a comment down below. If you don't agree, leave a comment down below all the same. But either way, thank you very much for watching, Phil. Thank, thank you. you.